Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is part two of the application for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada by James Turner, who was railroaded through inmate appeals court when he wasn't an inmate. And even though he complained he didn't want to be there, the Ontario Court of Appeal dismissed his appeal as abandoned when he didn't show up, which is probably one of the rare times that an inmate appeal is dismissed because the guards couldn't find the prisoner. Twenty. Appellant complained repeatedly to the registrar about the failure to comply with the normal rules of procedure for non-inmate appeals and was told that the hearing of his appeal for June 16, 2009 before inmate appeals court was now a fait accompli which could only be changed by order of one of the judges. So, 21, Appellant brought these irregularities to the attention of Justice McPherson and asked for an order quashing the date of the hearing until the appeal has been perfected. Justice McPherson dismissed the motion to quash the hearing until the appeal has been perfected, saying appellant would be told that his appeal why they were not proceeding by the normal rules. 22. Justice McPherson also approved the unobtrusive way of taping the proceedings for appellant's own notes with a small tape recorder. It's official, everybody. Bring your tape recorder. You can have it for your notes. 23. Before the hearing of the appeal, a court of appeal judge died and the appeal was delayed. 24. Appellant continued to try to find out how the Crown was able to schedule the hearing of an incomplete appeal without complying with Rule 18.3 requiring transcripts, Rule 16.1 requiring facta, Rule 18.2 requiring certificates of perfection, and Rule 18.1 requiring proofs of service. 25. Appellant again received notice from the Crown that the appeal was once again scheduled for hearing in Kingston on August 18th, 2009, upon the non-perfected re record complained of. Again, no mention that the appellant was being called before an inmate appeals court. 26. Finally, on Thursday, August 12th, Sandra Tedu, Deputy Registrar and Manager of the Court Administration, emailed... This appeal was originally scheduled to be heard on June 16th on the basis of the Crown's representation that it was ready to be argued. 27. No transcripts, no factums, no certificates of perfection, but the Crown says it's ready and the registrar doesn't check. It is the appellant who files the certificate of perfection, not the respondent. Wouldn't the registrar know that? The respondent's assertion is not a valid substitute for an appellant certificate of perfection. 28. She went on. You applied for an adjournment on the basis that the matter was not yet ready to proceed. Well, yeah, despite no transcripts, no factums, no certificates of perfection, it was still going to take more convincing to show that the matter was not yet ready to proceed? So she goes on. Your request was dealt with by Justice McPherson on June 9th. He refused to grant an adjournment, but indicated that you could renew your request before the panel scheduled to hear the appeal. And that's when they'd explain why they weren't going by the normal rule. So anyway, lack of transcripts, factum, certificates of completion couldn't convince Justice McPherson that the matter was not yet ready to proceed. Of course, sitting on inmate appeals court, judges don't expect transcripts or facta in aid of argument. She goes on, unfortunately, for reasons beyond our control, the appeal schedule for hearing June 16th had to be adjourned. They have been rescheduled for hearing at the next sitting of appeals in Kingston, still doesn't say inmate appeals, which occurs on August 18th. You are still entitled to request an adjournment, although you should be prepared to argue your appeal if the adjournment is refused. So they want you to show up and go on with it. So, 33, appellant was expected to prepare to argue his inmate appeal without any documentation, if the other two judges on the inmate appeals panel agreed with Judge McPherson that no documentation is the norm in non-inmate appe in inmate appeals and for non-inmates too. 34. Believing the registrar's failure to explain how the Crown had been able to circumvent the rules meant the registrar had probably helped in the circumvention of the rules, Appellant emailed the registrar demanding a faxed copy of the Certificate of Perfection or an order dispensing with the rules of procedure if they wanted him to attend the hearing of the non-perfected appeal before the Kingston Inmate Appeals Court. 
So with no certificate of perfection forthcoming, appellant did not attend the inmate appeals court at the Correctional Facilities Building in Kingston. 36. On August 18th, Ontario Court of Appeal Justices Stephen Gouge, Robert Armstrong, and Robert Blair ruled this application for leave to appeal and the appeal by way of inmate appeal by the above named against the order of the Honorable Justice Lalonde was considered on this day at Kingston, Ontario. On reading the material filed, on hearing the submissions of the counsel for the Crown, the appellant not appearing, the inmate not appearing, Although the case was duly called, this court orders that the appeal is dismissed as abandoned. Points of Objection, Part 2, 37. A. The Registrar of the Ontario Court of Appeal erred in scheduling the appeal without having first verified that Rule 18.3 requiring transcripts, Rule 16.1 requiring FACTA, Rule 18.2 requiring certificates of perfection, and Rule 18.1 requiring proofs of service for non-inmate appeals had been complied with. B. The Court of Appeal erred in using inmate appeal rules. C. The inmate appeal court erred in dismissing the inmate's application for leave to appeal when no inmate application for leave to appeal had been filed by the non-inmate appellant. D. The inmate appeal court erred in dismissing an inmate appeal as abandoned because the guards couldn't find the prisoner. Statement of Argument, Part 3. The Crown sidestepped the rules of procedure by mislabeling the appellant an inmate so as to take advantage of the exemptions to the normal rules that the appellant was due, factor of arguments from both parties in the record. 42. The Registrar of the Interior Court of Appeal was derelict in accepting a representation of the Crown that the appeal was ready rather than checking the files to verify if the appeal had been perfected. It's the appellant who files a certificate of perfection before scheduling an appeal, not the respondent who makes an assertion. 43. Since the appellant was not an inmate, no matter how convenient the Crown for treating him as such was, the registry still could not schedule the appeal without having first verified that Rule 18.3 requiring transcripts, Rule 16.1 requiring FACTA, Rule 18.2 requiring certificates of perfection, and Rule 18.1 requiring proofs of service for non native appeals had been complied with. Appellant can see that once the case had been slipped into the inmate appeal stream, other than appellant emailing a tyrant uh, raid about it to the registrar, no inmate appeals clerk would notice a lack of FACTA and transcripts that are not required in inmate appeals. B. The court erred in proceeding by way of inmate appeal rules because the appellant was not an inmate. The Crown makes it sound like a matter of convenience going by way of inmate appeals court in Kingston rather than overly booked Toronto venue which is belied by their taking advantage of the exemption to filing documentation in any appeals. They say they were prepared to argue the appeal in Kingston or Toronto, but did not have the documentation needed for Toronto. C. The inmate appeal court erred in dismissing the inmate's application for leave to appeal when no inmate application for leave to appeal had been filed by the non-inmate appellant for the inmate appeals court to dismiss. 46D. The inmate appeal court erred in dismissing an inmate appeal as abandoned because the court should have realized that this could not have been an inmate appeal when the guards couldn't find the prisoner. Order sought. Applicant seeks an order granting leave to appeal the judgment of the Interior Court of Appeal. Justices Stephen Gouge, Robert Armstrong, and Robert Blair, which dismissed the appellant's appeal against the November 26th decision of Justice Lalonde. So, that's it. That's James Turner's Memorandum of Arguments in the Supreme Court of Canada about being railroaded as an inmate through the system. When he wasn't an inmate.